Today, Mark and I are at Carkeek Park again in Seattle, Washington. Behind us is Puget Sound. And let's talk about the inclusive disjunction. So I have a sentence here. It's a compound sentence because it contains within itself one or more sentences. Within this sentence, we see Anne is home and we see Bob is home. So this compound has two sentences within it, two embedded sentences or sentence components. The, this type of a sentence is called a disjunction. The Anne is home is called the left disjunct. The Bob is home is called the right disjunct. And the word or is obviously functioning as a sentence operator. Remember, a sentence operator is a word or a phrase that joins one or more sentences into a compound sentence. The word or, since it forms a disjunction compound, is called the disjunction operator. So that's the left disjunct, that's the right disjunct, and this is the disjunction operator of this compound. There are two meanings of the word or in the English language. Sometimes when we use the word or to join two sentences into a disjunction, we mean to say that one or the other or both are true. And in that case, we call that an, an inclusive disjunction. And sometimes when we use the word or to join two sentences together, we are asserting that one or the other, but not both sentences are true. And in that case, we call the disjunction an exclusive disjunction. So I'm s stipulating that this is an inclusive disjunction. I'm asserting that this is true, or this is true, or they both are true. And so there's obviously a functional relationship between the truth values of the component sentences and the truth value of the compound as a whole. And now I'd like to have Mark fill in a truth table. I'll help him out by drawing a table here. A truth table for this compound sentence. Okay. Well, we have the Mark. A. We have the you've, A. You've become, or, you've become a disembodied arm. I, I am indeed, but it's I'm ontologically established arm-wise here. A A's gonna. Where did the rest of you go? Into the void. The void. <laughs> I don't know. A is gonna stand for the uh, Anna's home. B for Bob is home. And we're gonna translate this A wedge. B. And A is either going to be true or false. And these are going to be the four possible truth value combinations. So if both are home, the statement as a whole would be true. If Anne's home, but Bob's away doing Lord knows what, the statement will still be true. If Anne's not at home, and Bob is at home, probably pining away. You mean a T there? I do indeed mean a T. <laughs> this is what happens when you lose your mind and only have an arm. You start writing strangely. You, uh, if at least one of them is home, the statement as a whole is true. But if both are not home, the statement would be false. So the only way you would make a wedge false is if both sides are false. If either side, if either disjunct is true, the statement as a whole would be true. Thank you, Thing. There we go. So, so um, the, the dis inclusive dis this table just says that the inclusive disjunction of two sentences is true in every case except when each of the disjuncts is false. That's essentially what that table says. Thank you. All right.